So today in this video, I'm going to show you guys how I built my custom meter bridge for my Allen & Heath mixing console. True Sound Studios is in your ears. Hey guys, welcome back to True Sound Studios. I'm Wiesna, and today I get to show you guys how I built this custom meter bridge. So before we get into this video, go ahead and check the description box down below. All of my mixing and mastering rates are in there if you guys wanna work on a project together, as well as some of the gear and equipment that I use. So in a previous video, what I did was I took the entire mixing console, I took all the modules out of it, I cut it in half and added a 19 inch rack mount section in the very middle of the console. And I, I technically I added like 26 extra inches. So the original uh, meter bridge was not gonna fit on there anymore because it was gonna be too short. Also, I really kind of wanted to add some LED meters in there and I wanted to add a couple frequency analyzers. So anyways, let's get into this video. Let me show you how easy it is to really build your own meter bridge. Okay, so we can see the frame here of the meter bridge. It's built out of one by three pine. It's just, it's just prime pine, that's why it's all white. So the very bottom and the very top are a one by three pine and then the wood in between is just filling up space. Uh, but this this section right here, this is actually where the 16 channel LED meters are gonna go. You can see that piece of wood up there, just kind of framing it out just so it fits the proper size. And then this smaller little section, this is for one of the tablet screens up running the frequency analyzer. And then this little mini thing here is really just to fill up some space. Not sure what I'm gonna do with that in the future. This opening here is, is really just, there's gonna be a computer monitor in front of it, so no need to box it up. Once again, a little void space. We have the tablet frequency analyzer, and then this is actually one of the 16 channel LED units. This is a TOA MP1216 unit, and I'm gonna be obviously using two of these, one on each side, and they connect to the direct outputs on the mixing console. And now I just installed the left meter. So we got the left meter there and then the right one that was already installed. And this is kind of shows you a little bit of what it's gonna look like in the end. This is actually how I mounted it. I just used a flat piece of aluminum, drilled some holes in it, mounted it to the hardware that was previous to it. You can see how this actually LED meter is just backwards mounted with standard 19 inch rack mount ears. It's just screwed through. I use short enough screws obviously so they don't poke out the front of it. And then this is what the tablet mount looks like. So you have a piece of one by two lath in the back with one of those, I forget what they're called, the type of screws. It's got the little fingers on it that grab into the wood. And then there's a bolt that goes all the way through that. But you can see that's one of the tablets there real quick. And uh, if you push it up front like this, that's actually what it looked like in the end. So now I just gotta make a mount to keep those up front. You can see from the back here, this is actually what it looks like. That's where the tablet's gonna go. And uh, you can see I got my Amazon Fire tablet right there. Um, so we're gonna spin it around so that the, obviously the screen is pointing towards the front. And most importantly, all the buttons and jacks need to be facing you know, in a direction that you can actually still get to them. And then right here, I'm pointing to a little, little stopper that perfectly aligns the entire tablet to be center in the opening. And then the back, you can see I'm using just another scrap piece of wood. And what's gonna happen is I'm just screwing that bolt to push against that other scrap piece of wood and that really holds it all in place. I'm not gonna do any type of like a thumbnail screw or anything like that because you know, it's not a, never meant to take on and off, but you can see that's that's what it looks like there. If you wanted to slightly tighten a little bit more with a screwdriver, you could, but I think a finger tighten is really all you need for this. You don't want to break break the actual tablet screen. So this is what it looks like from the front. You see it right here, I'm running a, a spectral analyzer app on the actual Amazon Fire tablet and Right now it's just being picked up with my voice, but in another video I actually show you how to hook it up to the mixing console and I will be using one of the aux channels to actually feed it the uh, the signal that I want. But you can see this is uh, this is really what it's gonna look like in the end. It just is going to need to get painted and um, a little bit of details going on, but you can see here's the second frequency analyzer tablet running. So I got both of them hooked up and I should mention that both of them are gonna be on their own separate auxes. So you can actually send one to one thing and the other to another thing if you want it. So if you guys like this video, please click that like button. 
So the only thing you actually need to be able to access from these tablets is the power button. You need to actually be able to turn the tablets on and off. So I had to come up with a way, and you can see this dowel is mounted to like what's a little like thumbnail bolt, and they're both touching both power buttons. So all you do, so all you do to turn on the tablet is to rock it either to the right or to the left. And there's a little thumbnail bolt on the other side, on the front side of it, so you can actually turn these on and off. So you can see here, if I go ahead and twist this thing, you can turn the tablet off and then turn it back on. And this is the final look after it's actually been painted. So it looks much better black. Uh, I was gonna try to match it with the gray of the mixing console, but I went with black. You can see on the back here, I'm running all 16 direct outputs that connect to the back of that TOA unit into all the line inputs. So in case you didn't catch it, how I'm actually connecting this LED meter to the mixing console, I'm not like tapping into any of the channel strips or anything like that. All I'm doing is running a direct output from 16 channels, so I have 16 direct outputs running into the back of the TOA LED meter, which has 16 line inputs. And so that's how I'm connecting it together. So after you get it all hooked up, what I did was I just used a, um, I used pink noise to calibrate all the line inputs with the direct outputs and then what the meters were saying. So that this way, you know, when I sent zero dB from one channel and as it passed through and came back out the direct uh, output and then showed up on the meter, it was actually showing the same signal. And then this way, you have a very accurate uh, representation of what that signal is actually coming in on. And every like maybe month or so, I go back and recalibrate them just to make sure that nothing changed. So not only can you do this for the actually, you know, the individual channels, but you could do it for the auxes. You could do it for the, the group sections. I mean, you could really do it on anything. Uh, probably the only thing that would be just tougher is working with the stereo channels because there is no direct outputs on that. Uh, so you would have to probably make some sort of custom cable that allowed you to have two connections. But besides that, I mean, really, you could buy a whole bunch of these things and have LED meters on your entire mixing console. And so not only would this work on the Allen Heath, but really this would kind of work on any mixing console, especially if it has a direct output. You know, I'm using my mixing console more mainly for mixing, not necessarily for recording. So the direct outputs are, are really not being used. The only time I use the direct outputs is when I'm actually recording, you know, where I'm just having signal come in, go through a channel strip, and then come back out and then go to the DAW. Because I'm mixing, I'm just sending signal from the DAW into the line inputs, and then all that's being summed together as a stereo file. So my direct outputs are not being used, which is why this worked out so well for me. The two frequency analyzer tablets you guys see in this video, I actually made a separate video on how to do this because uh, you need to use a TRRS, like little mini jack, and because it's it's actually using a mic in signal, so it's not actually using the microphone on the on the tablet, because it's using this mic in signal, you kind of had to do a little bit of manipulation of the actual cable and then run it through a DI box. But if you guys want to see that, the link is in the description box below, and you guys can check that video out as well. So those LED meters are a TOA MP1216 is the model number. Uh, I got these on eBay between like 50 and $70. I actually bought three of them. Uh, originally I was gonna have a third one in the other room so I could monitor drums, but I decided not to do that. So it's kind of like a spare for me for right now. Um, I'll also include that, a link to that in the description below, but <laughs> just know if you buy it new, they are way more expensive. So be patient, find them online used. So guys, thanks for watching this video. This was really fun to build this. this is something I haven't 
been wanting to do for so long, you know, was to modify the console, do all the recapping, all the modifications to the actual electronics, cut the thing in half, add the middle section, do all this customization. I, I love doing it, so it's not really much of a chore for me. So anyways, I broke down all these different modifications into different videos. So I will link all that in the description box below. Also at the very end of this video, there'll be a couple little boxes you can click on to watch some of the other videos. So guys, as always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. So thank you for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, click that like button and consider subscribing for more content. So not only do I make YouTube videos, but I also produce tracks and I can mix and master your music. So once again, thank you for watching this video. I'm Wiesna and True Sound Studios is in your ears.